ancient time, Earth was nearly destroyed. In 2008, the world had gotten one of the most badly hilarious pieces of entertainment of all time. Feast your eyes upon Dragon Ball Evolution, the loosely adapted live action adaptation of Dragon Ball Z. Now, this movie was so bad that it had its own kind of uh, charm to it, let's just say. To the point that I've watched this film, if you can call it that, at least twice that I can remember. Watching it recently, it felt like one of those cheap Hallmark Channel romance movies, except they tried to imitate Marvel and it just didn't work. Akira Toriyama hated the film so much that he actually got DBZ to be revived and actually made a movie called Battle of Gods in 2013. Once again, Dragon Ball Evolution showing its unique charm. But you may ask, why am I talking about Dragon Ball Evolution at all? Well, fear not because this video does actually have a point and I'm not just mansplaining my love and hate relationship with Evolution. Recently, you might have seen the latest trailer for the One Piece Netflix live action series, and it had the internet in a bit of a conundrum, let's just say. Some people found this trailer to be the best looking trailer of any live action Netflix shows. Others thought it looked terrible. Lastly, the more sensible people found the trailer to not look too bad, but not earth shatteringly amazing either. Now, unlike most, I won't pretend whether I know this show's gonna be any good or not. Netflix generally don't have a good track record when it comes to live action stuff. In fact, they have a 0% hit rate with any live action stuff. But hey, records are there to be broken. Maybe One Piece is the show that finally does it. I don't know. However, all this talk got me thinking about what a successful live action show would need in order to not feel like massive cringe blast for 8 to 12 episodes. Is One Piece gonna be a hit? Once again, I don't know, but I have come up with a small little itty bitty list of things One Piece and frankly any other ambitious live action project should do in order to be somewhat decent. First, let's set the ground rules slash boundaries. This video will be more so a guide for adapting more theatrical anime. What I mean by that is that I'll talk about shows that would need to be more CGI intensive if they were to be adapted. Because of course, adapting something like, I don't know, School Days, A Slice of Life is much different and objectively an easier task than adapting something like One Piece, a completely off the walls piece of fiction that has absolutely no visual semblance of reality in it. So yeah, subscribe. If you even watched a single episode of an anime in your life, you know that dialogue is probably the most cringe part of it, and I mean that in an endearing and good way, I promise. Because animation is such a flexible and expressive medium, anything a character can say can be matched with movement and animation that make it feel and look not well, well uh, not shit. How many times have you watched an anime scene and some character just busts out some cringe one-liner that you know would suck so much in real life, but it's alright because the animation somehow makes it work. This very reason is why we have those anime skits on YouTube, because the dialogue can be so cringy but funny at the same time if those videos are self-aware. If a character says something dumb, you can animate that subject accordingly to what they say. And even doing that sweating thing that people do in anime when someone says something stupid or weird and whatever. But in real life, none of that works. When a character says anything in live action, the only clue the viewers have as to the reactions of the characters around them is just their facial expressions. The background can't change on a whim, people can't randomly start sweating, and eyes can't enlarge themselves out of nowhere. The only visual clue people have is the acting. Therefore, when writing for live action, there simply can't be any room for such whimsical reactions from the characters. And that starts with... Well, the writing itself being more down to earth and less animified, if you will. If the anime live action fail to do this and they write anime lines without actual animation to back them up, cringe is the only end result you'll get. It doesn't matter if you get the best writers on the planet, writing anime lines in a non-animated form is just not gonna work. For example, the live action for Cowboy Bebop. On paper, the show had everything going for it. The casting was on point, especially John Cho as Spike. The trailer looked hype, and it still does, to be honest. Yoko Kano was back doing the music, and Watanabe was somehow involved as well. On the surface, Cowboy Bebop looked to be the one to break the mold of terrible, stinky live actions. But upon airing, the biggest criticism of the show by thousands was that the show was outright just cringe. Turns out when real people act like animated pixels unironically, it's not fun to watch. 
All in all, that's to say, dialogue is key. I know, revolutions by yours truly, I know, I know. No, in all seriousness, any show needs good dialogue. But it's especially crucial for anime dialogue to be adapted in a way that's befitting of an IRL show. And to me, dialogue is just as important, if not more, as the CGI and design of a show. Speaking of CGI and design... Growing up, I've always been told by grown-ups that I shouldn't judge a book by its cover. You know, that usual ramble. But from my experience, at least when it comes to live-action stuff, judging by the cover is a pretty decent way to go about things. What I mean by that is judging a live-action by the visuals. We're at a point in time where CGI is essentially Pandora's box. We get shows and films that genuinely look really good that have huge amounts of CGI in them, but also at times we get dog water, garbage, poo poo stinky that makes you make this face. CGI more or less can be hit or miss. So this may be obvious, but for a live action anime to succeed, the CGI better be the good stuff. I'm talking the finest powder that Netflix has to offer. But anyway, that's, that's obvious. Let's talk about something more interesting. The design of a show. Design and shows can be divided into two parts, or at least I'm gonna divide it into two parts right now. World design, slash set design, and of course, character design. As for set design, it's pretty obvious once again. If you're adapting an anime, make sure the design of things like ships and buildings and weapons and whatnot look realistic, but also a little unrealistic, as if they've been somehow taken out of the animated world. It's really about finding the balance between realism and staying accurate to the adaptation. As for character design, it's a little bit more complicated. Much like dialogue, live-action characters look very goofy when they're not animated. When particularly a shounen anime gets adapted, oftentimes the actors look as if they're cosplaying the characters instead of actually being the characters. There's been a handful of times where I see a live-action character and immediately can think of better costumes in pictures I've seen from Anime Expo. Now, I don't actually have a proper solution to this problem, but I do have a halfway kind of band-aid solution thing. My solution is that when adapting fictional characters, I suggest that if there's any unrealistic or goofy looking part of a character design that isn't actually an integral part of the story, just take it out in the live action version. I know I pissed a ton of purists in chat by saying that, cause I know details matter, but I'd rather sacrifice insignificant detail for a more immersive experience. A recent example of doing this correctly would be funnily enough from the recent One Piece trailer. In said trailer, there are three smallish details that are missing from Sanji, Usopp, and Luffy. For one, Sanji doesn't have his iconic curly eyebrows, Usopp doesn't have his long ass nose, and Luffy is wearing shoes and not sandals. Now I know those might be important details to you, but by sacrificing those little details, you give more room for realism. Having a wobbly Pinocchio nose wouldn't add to Usopp's live-action character at all. In fact, because it's live-action, having that kind of unrealistic protrusion would actually, I would think, put people off. By omitting little details like that from the designs, it allowed the filming to be much easier and not look too crazy. Let me be very clear on this. Unrealistic designs should only be omitted from live-action when they're not significant enough to the story. Usopp's nose and Sanji's eyebrows don't change the outcome of anything early on in the story, though it is brought up at times. Therefore, if a design choice is inherently connected to the story, then no matter how goofy or stupid or dumb it may look, it can't be omitted under any circumstance. In the trailer, the overall consensus was that everything looked pretty good except for Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Mi, which looked a little off despite the scene being at night and it being dark on purpose, I'd imagine. But of course, it had to be there. No matter how weird or bad it may look, Netflix had to take the hit because Luffy's rubber body is almost as important as Luffy himself. Therefore, by taking out things that aren't a necessity for the sake of realism and keeping traits that are important, any live-action anime becomes that much more palatable and more pleasing to the human eye. Well, that about concludes this video. Now, I know I didn't talk about the music, acting, special effects, and, and whatnot because those are obvious things that any good live action or just show needs. I want to make this video talking about more specific and little details that I would want in any live action for me personally and I just don't see a lot of people talk about these little traits and I just want to make a video about it. Anyway, subscribe, eat a cookie, and uh, I'll see you shut-ins next time, whenever that is. Alright, bye.